Hi everybody, welcome back to the production session. Today I'm going to show you a really cool new virtual instrument called Bass Slapper. Released just last week by Waves Audio and uh, created by a couple of friends of mine, Eyal Amir and Or Lubianiker, those of you in the prog scene, the prog rock scene, might know them from Project RNL. And uh, also, in addition to being uh, really great musicians, they are also very good plugin developers because I really like uh, the plugin that I'm going to show you today, Bass Slapper. And uh, before we go into the details, uh, maybe we can have a little look and a little listen to how it sounds like. So I think it's very evident and very obvious that the instrument itself as a virtual instrument sounds very real. I know a lot of emphasis was placed here on realism. The developers of the instrument uh, went to great lengths to just sample everything on the instrument, every position, every register, every string, um, and the different modes of the bass, and of course, every articulation of the slap technique. And this sounds very good. <laughs> We'll dive soon into the different modes here. Uh, I'll just give you a couple of examples. But they did really a very good job on the bass sampling, which is very important because um, later on when you drive it through different uh, compression or effects like overdrive, which we'll have a little look, it also features these things. Um, it's uh, really sounding convincing and really sticks through with all these different uh, articulations and techniques that they did. So let's just have a quick look. Um, we have the bass here, and um, there is there are a few knobs here that you can control, like how vintage or how modern it sounds. Sorry. Or, for example, give it a low boost. What we have here is a sub octave, so you can add, actually add an octave below. Oh. That's pretty cool. Kind of giving it a chorusy tone without actually using chorus. Chorus plus octave, and it's thickening the bass a little bit. Now let's have a look at the actual bass because, as I told you before, they sampled um, the bass in different registers, different positions of playing. So right now I am on position number one, which means anything I play will be favored um, on the first register. So it's like five frets and... And this register will be just preferred. If I go uh, outside, then it will just go as high as it can. But um, as long as I'm in that register, it will prefer to play the notes there. Now, if I put it, for example, on five, then it will just prefer this area of the bass and you can really you can really sense that there is a big difference between between the areas between the registers this sounds much more much rounder as you would expect from a real bass instrument so let's just make a little comparison i will turn off the sub octave so that you can just hear it clearly
okay and now I'm getting it back to number one huge difference this is much thinner and more you know spicy what happens if I take it to 10 okay this is below the range but differences which is so cool because because a real bass player would not play just anything anywhere uh, a real bass player would really choose where it's um, positioning its fingerings kind of like guitar player um, but also for bass it's the same thing so um, so it's depending on sound what kind of sound you want to get like you know sharper or rounder and also um, how would the real bass player approach this if you really want to invest in the part and make it sound realistic? Yeah, you can also click on the different positions and you will get them correctly. Um, now let's have a look at a couple more features. And uh, one of them that is really cool that I discovered is the ar actual articulations. And um, for example, you have uh, string mute uh, samples. So mute, muted strings are sampled and this is really cool because, because you can, for example, you can um, kind of choke notes in a realistic way, meaning, for example, if I play, if I play this, yeah, and I'm just kind of choking it like a bass player would with a mute, muted slap. Now, another really cool thing I discovered about this instrument is the legato modes. So until now, I just use um, legato off, basically. It's a just, just slip, 100% slap. But what happens, for example, if I use realistic legato, this means that um, the instrument is trying to apply some kind of bass player logic, as much as that exists, into the, uh, into the playing. What it means, for example, is that if I play a C and I'm on register number five and then I play a D. C and D would be slapped but what happens if I play E now? You don't hear the slap and that's because there is some kind of legato applied here which means that only the first note play in the phrase in every string uh, is being slapped the others are being played legato. First note, legato, legato, D and E are legato. Here, C is on uh, the second string, sorry, the <laughs> for a bass it's hard to count. <laughs> so C is on the fourth string, and uh, then D is on the third string, so it's still slapped, but E, is still on the first string so, and there was D before so it wasn't slapped here three of them so only C is, only C is slapped and as long as I hold C D and E won't be if I just do this of course it's not legato it's all slapped but if I hold the C I can get a legato and it's kind of um, sophisticated way to express uh, bass lines without really needing to, le needing to think oh yeah now it's legato now it's staccato this is slap this is not slap so finally let's do a little test you know with a legato kind of mode um, I'm gonna play a little bass solo as much as I can think like a bass solo player um, so I'm changing the position from manual to adaptive which is a really cool feature it means that there is some kind of logic applied here um, what is the best position to play what you are giving it and we have um, the default uh, position number 10 but it doesn't matter because it might change when I play and uh, we have a few effects on which is the last thing I want to show you so we have the compressor on we have the chorus on the delay on and the reverb and uh, 
we are kind of displaying a lot of them together and I still think it sounds really wonderful it's uh, it doesn't sound you know over compressed or or you know the kind of <laughs> the kind of crunchy sound you have but not in a good way from putting just a lot of effects on no the signal really flows well so let's have a little listen <laughs> 